Hi there. So today's class is going to be primarily on the floor and you're going to need either three of the spongy blocks or just one foam brick. They're about, they're about the same width, so that'll work perfectly. And you're going to need a chair or a block or an ottoman, something to put your legs up on. So we're going to start out in the static back. We'll get you to put your legs up. Now, come here, buddy. Now, you're going to, again, want to be as close to your prop as you can be. We want to have a 90 degree hip and a 90 degree knee. Then arms are just a little bit away from the body, palms the hands face up. Sometimes when you lay down in static back, your upper back and shoulders might not immediately relax and it can be helpful to have something to put your head on. So if you lay down and you feel nauseous, um, if you feel headachey, um, if there's just a lot of tension in the neck and shoulders, or if you can sense that your chin is quite high and the back of the neck is shorter than the front of the neck, then you would want something under your head. So again, arms are just a little bit away from the body, palms the hands face up. We're going to let the body settle here for a minute. Now, technically static back, we would usually let the back settle for about five minutes, but if it takes longer, for your mid back to settle, if it takes longer for your low back to settle, you would stay here as long as you need to. And we might choose to keep the eyes open, we might choose to close the eyes, whatever would feel more restful. And you simply begin by noticing the feeling of the breath in the body. Each time you inhale, the body expands a little bit. Each time you exhale, the body settles. As we keep the feeling of the breath in the back of the mind, just scanning the body, noticing if you're holding tension, where you're holding tension, can you let it go? So noticing all the little muscles in your face, your forehead, around your eyes. Observing the little muscles in your lips and your lower jaw. Allow your lips to soften. Allow the bottom jaw to relax away from the top jaw. Noticing your neck, gentle little arch in the back of the neck. Allowing for the softness in the throat. Feeling the air on the fingers and the palms of the hands. Noticing the heaviness of your arms on the floor beneath you. Observing your shoulders. Get a sense that you're holding onto your arms. Can you let that go a little bit? Noticing your back from the top of the shoulders to the tailbone. Is the back settling level right and left side? Observing the state of your hips, is there any sensation in your hip joints? Paying particular attention to the front of the hip or the crease of the hip. Do you have a sense that there's gripping there? Do you have a sense that you want to push the block away or that you're holding your legs? See if you can let that go. Noticing your inner leg aligned from the knee to the groin. Do you feel like you're trying to hold your legs together or keep hold your legs on the prop? Can you let that go? Noticing your knees, your lower legs, your ankles, any sensation in your feet. Have the body settled moment just notice the state of the mind. Is your mind very busy? Is your mind very quiet? Follow the thoughts for a moment. 
And then practice shifting the noticing from watching your thoughts back to feeling the breath. When you inhale, body expands. When you exhale, body settles and lets go. You can you could pause the video right here and hang on static back a little bit longer if you feel like your back hasn't settled. If you feel like the back has settled, we're now gonna move the arms up shoulder height. And it's interesting to observe when you go from sort of a little bit lower up to shoulder height, you want to notice if your back changes. The sensation in the upper back, shoulder blades changes. And you can choose to stretch all your fingers out so you can get flat hands. And then the exercise is you're going to turn the palms to face down and then turn the palms to face up. So we want to, this would be very somewhat easy to do from the wrist. You want to think about the movement coming from the shoulder. And we're going to do 20 of these. So that's five, six, seven, eight. Noticing if the movement of the hand changes sensation in the wrist, forearm, shoulder. Nine, and that's 20. Okay, now, just let your arms relax. You're gonna notice how that's changed. And then I'm gonna get you to bend your elbows. So you're gonna bend your elbows so you have a 90 degree elbow. And then moving again at the shoulder, you're gonna bring your forearms back to the floor into goalpost arms and then up again to 90 degrees. So the forearms are coming back and up. And hopefully you don't have dogs in your way or maybe you do. Now we could make this movement a little bigger. So instead of just going to goalpost in 90, you might go all the way down to the floor on both sides. That being said, it can be sort of tricky to get the hands to go down on either side of the waist without letting the shoulder lift up off the floor. So the key to this one is keeping the upper back and shoulder on the floor as you rotate. So forward and back, and I'm currently doing Sort of both arms at the same time, keeping the shoulders on the floor. Now you're going to alternate. So one hand will go up and the other hand will go down. Just notice how that's different in the shoulders, different response in the upper back. Of course, you're breathing. Just a couple more here. It is, not, it is never important how big the movement is or what it looks like. What is important is that you're just getting a sense of what the range of motion is in your shoulder joints right now. And if that changes over time. And if the movement makes you feel better or worse. Now you're gonna reach your arms up in front of you. You're gonna spread your fingers out a little bit. Get the thip, tips of the thumbs to touch. So we're gonna keep our wrist shoulder width apart. You're gonna push your arms towards the ceiling and then set them back down. So you push your arms, if there was a ceiling tile above your head, you're pushing it up and then you're setting it back down. As the arms go forward and back, the shoulder blades will go wide and the shoulder blades will come together. You want to watch that you're not bending your elbows so if you were bending your, you could, you could kind of fake out this range of motion by bending the elbows. That's not what we're doing. You want shoulder blades wide, shoulder blades together. Arms go up, arms go straight down. When your belly is soft, your jaw is relaxed. And then again, so we started out doing both arms together. Now you're going to alternate. So you separate your hands a little bit and it's one arm up and down and the other arm up and down. 
you might notice that you have a little more reach when you're doing one arm at a time. And that is likely because you're letting the ribs go with you a little bit and that's okay. So this can be a little bit of rotation in the rib cage, that's fine. So now we've got a sense that we can get the shoulder blades moving in this way. Then I'm gonna get you to put your elbows on the floor. Again, you go back to that 90 degree elbow and we're gonna squeeze the shoulder blades together and let them relax wide. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, relax wide. And you'll probably notice as I do this, my rib cage wants to pop up a little bit as I, as I squeeze the shoulder blades together and then relaxes as they go wide. You want to sort of minimize that. So we're not trying to move the rib cage. It's just protraction and retraction of the shoulder blades. Shoulder blades make together, shoulder blades relax wide. The other thing we want to watch again is, is that the, the head of the humerus or the top of the shoulder is not popping up off the floor too much. You want to notice, can I do this? First things first, can I move my shoulder blades here? And then you want to notice, is the, is the range of motion pain free? And does it feel similar right and left side? One more of those. Then you're gonna let your arms relax. So as you let your arms relax, just notice if it is easier to move your head up the floor, if it is easier to move your rib cage up the floor, has your back totally flattened? Has your upper back changed? I need you to take your legs up off your block, scoot your block away, and just for a moment, lie flat. And maybe, maybe you can see, I know it's hard, I got dogs in the way, but when I stretched my legs out, my ribs popped up. So my back is no longer flat and it shouldn't be. So when you, when you are lying flat on the ground, an arch should show up in your back. If your back doesn't love this, first thing you might try is putting something under the head. And then just pause for a moment. It is incredibly common to have sensations show up in your low back and hips when you lie flat. Just observe how that feels right now. And you wanna notice if the exercises you do make that feel better or worse. I'm just gonna get these out of the way for a moment. Now, you're gonna bend to both knees and you're gonna heel toe walk your feet. If you're on a mat, it'd be about mat width apart. If you're not on a mat, just wider than your hips significantly so that when you drop your knees together, so when you drop into internal rotation, your knees just barely touch. Now, if you're a person who's very flexible this way, if you were maybe a little person who could W sit, you wanna, you don't wanna go as far as you could go. So we're just gonna hang out in internal rotation for a moment, just noticing how that feels in the hips, in the low back. And then we're gonna add a little movement. So you're gonna let both legs go left and both legs go right. So you're gonna windshield wipe a little bit, a little bit side to side. Both legs go right, both legs go left. As you do this, you're sort of monitoring your feet, watching that your feet don't want to turn out. And there's a tendency for the feet either to want to get closer together, try not to let them. There's also a tendency for the feet to want to move away from you, keep them as close to you as, like it's self-adjust every now and then. If they start to walk away from you, scooch them back in. If my feet want to start getting closer together, it kind of tells you that you're trying to avoid the movement at the hip and take it into your waist. So just watch that you're keeping your feet about mat width apart. Trying to keep the rib cage a little bit still, trying to keep the shoulders a little bit still. Now legs are going to come back up through center. Feet are parallel, they're pelvis width apart. We're gonna work with a little bit of pelvic tilting. So you're gonna push with your feet back flattened, 
pull with your feet back arches. So push with your feet, pelvis tips back, pull with your feet, pelvis tips forward. Again, just noticing how this feels in your low back, also how it feels in your hips. Does it feel the same right and left side? And we're not lifting the pelvis up off the floor. So it's not a hip lift at all. Keeping the sacrum on the floor. Now think about pulling your pelvis into neutral. And you're gonna take your left ankle on your right thigh. Left ankle, right thigh. You're pushing your left knee away. You're using your hips to do that. You're gonna stretch your arms out to look like a letter T. Turn the palms of your hands to face down. Roll over the pinky toe side of your right foot, bringing your right thigh to the floor, maybe bringing your left foot to the floor, and then looking away from your legs. So if your legs are going over to the right, your face is looking left, and you're breathing. If your legs don't get to the floor, you can put something underneath them or just kind of don't worry about it too much. Just find a little bit of tension in the waist with the left shoulder on the floor and hang out wherever you're at. You're going to bring your legs back up. You're going to uncross. Just pause between sides and make any little adjustments to your feet that you need to. And then you're going to take your right ankle on your left thigh. Externally rotate a little bit. Roll over the pinky toe side of the left foot. Bring your left side to the floor. Bring your right foot sole to the floor. Again, we might look away from the legs. You're absolutely going to notice the difference in your right and left side. That's okay. In, in the Agassi method, we actually use twists, so we use rotation to help counter rotation. So if your posture is to say have one hip slightly forward to the other or one shoulder slightly forward to the other, we are using rotation to help mitigate that. Breathing quietly in and out through the nose. And you're gonna bring your legs back up. You're gonna uncross. So from here, I need you to roll up just into tabletop, knees below shoulders, knees below hips. You go through a little bit of cats and dogs. So you're gonna push the floor away, look back towards your knees, tuck your tail, little cat back, lift your tail, drop your belly, draw your shoulder blades together, look up, little dog back. Keep moving in that way. You might breathe out. Spinal flexion, breathe in, spinal extension. Just like with the pelvic tilts, you want to notice, does this feel the same right and left side of my spine? What parts of the spine feel like they move most easily? Also, Noticing how this feels in the front of the hip. So is your pelvis easily moving forward and back relative to your thighs? You do one more cat. Really finish that cat back. One more dog. Really finish that dog back. And then I'm going to need you to lay down on your left side. So you're going to lay down on your left side. You're going to make your knees up a little bit. You've got a 90 degree hip, a 90 degree knee. The left hand is going to hold right knee. You're going to pick your right arm up and reach it back behind you. So again, we're coming into a spinal twist. So three spinal twists today. Breathing. And how you feel about dogs barking in your yoga class. Dogs probably can't get on the couch. Do 
take one more breath here. Bring that back arm forward, just rest on your side for a moment, like lotus twist. And then I'll get you to roll onto your other side. So you're gonna roll onto your other side. You got a 90 degree hip, 90 degree knee. Hips are stacked. Maybe you have your 80 pound dog to hold your knee down for you. That's an excellent little assist there from Bill. You're gonna reach your left arm up and back behind you. So this is gonna turn. Remember in the twist, you're not really trying to deepen your breath. In fact, the whole idea of deepening the breath is maybe somewhat unnecessary. As you move into a shape, just let your body breathe. So you're quietly breathing through your nose, not trying to force or strain. And the breath is absolutely going to change in a twist because we're changing the amount of pressure in our torso. Again, you can have something under your head or not. Whatever feels better for you. But if your head doesn't easily come to the floor, definitely prop it up. You're going to take one more breath here. We'll bring that arm back. One more time, you're going to roll yourself up into tabletop. Wrist below shoulders, knees below hips, little cats and dogs. You push the floor away as you breathe out. Put the cat back. Pull the floor towards you as you breathe in, little dog back. Now, not that there's any sort of right or wrong, but it is interesting to observe if you can get into your cat and dog and you get the spine moving without your elbows bending. Time you go through cat back, just really finish that cat back. Time you go through dog back, really finish your dog back. And then again, you're gonna come back down onto your back. This is probably currently my favorite twist. It's called crocodile. So you're gonna stretch yourself out and lie flat. You wanna have two straight legs parallel and pelvis width apart. And then you're stretching your arms out shoulder height. You're gonna really have active legs. Take your left foot directly on top of your right foot. Really push your feet away. So you want your legs to stay the same length. And then you're gonna pick your left hip up and rotate the pelvis over. As you pick the hip up, you're gonna turn to look away from your feet. So your feet are going right, your gaze is going left. Your legs are active. So you can really feel the work in your right hip, pressing down into the floor to help rotate that left hip up. Again, same thing, you're just breathing, holding. Take one more breath, roll everything back. Uncross your feet, feet are parallel, push away. You pick your right foot up, put it on top of the left. And same thing, roll your pelvis over. Really squeeze your feet into the floor, or sorry, really squeeze your shoulders into the floor. Really squeeze that left hip into the floor. You will likely notice one side, again, more difficult than the other. This is one, if you were to do it every day, you'd notice a pretty big difference pretty fast. I find it very, very helpful if you have a lot of tension in your low back. That being said, you're doing this stretch. It's painful. You don't love it. Doesn't feel right when you're done. Don't do it. Just because something should be helpful doesn't always mean that it is. Jess is having a hard time getting on the couch. Take one more breath, roll everything back, uncross your legs, just for a moment, lie flat. Now, a little different movement for the upper back and shoulders. You're gonna come through tabletop and then you're gonna walk your hands forward a little bit. 
so that your shoulders are over your wrists and your hips are slightly in front of your knees. Then keeping your elbows straight, you're gonna let your shoulder blades relax together. So again, we're knifing the shoulder blades together and we're gonna let our head hang. And you're letting the, the back really, really arch. Now, if you feel your low back a little bit, you can shift your hips back, that, that will help. But we wanna think about shoulder blades together. It's kind of the most important aspect of static extension. And just really letting your head go. I'm gonna hang out here for about a minute, minute and a half. If your wrists don't love this, so if, if you're fine here, just stay here. But if your wrists don't love this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your elbows directly below your shoulders. You're gonna put your hands in the golf club grips. You're gonna fold your fingers and thumbs face up. Move it a little further back. Again, same thing. Hips are slightly forward to the knees. Shoulders are over the elbows. You're letting your shoulder blades relax together. You're letting your head dangle. And then you're gonna try and widen your forearms. Just breathing, relaxing your jaw. In out here, really relaxing the front of the hips. Take one more breath here. Pick your head up, pick yourself back up through tabletop, and then again, just make your way down onto your back. So you make your way down onto your back, and you're gonna grab your blocks. Coming into hook line, knees bent, feet flat. You got about a fist width between your knees, about a fist width between your big toes. Your feet are parallel, pointing straight ahead. And then you take your blocks and set them between your knees. Arms a little bit away from the body. Maybe it's all together. So belly soft. You're going to squeeze your blocks, relax. Squeeze your blocks, relax. Three. Four, we're doing 20 of these, five, six, don't use your bum, seven, eight, shoulders stay relaxed, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now take your blocks out without without really rearranging your legs. Now you're gonna think about your glutes. So those are the cheeks that are not in your face. You're gonna tense your bum, relax. Tense your bum, relax. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now walk your feet together, let your knees go wide. So coming into frog, just hanging out here for a moment. Let your arms relax, let your shoulders relax. And breathe. In, in this shape, it doesn't really matter how low your knees are. What we're kind of looking at is, are my knees the same height? and is sensation the same right and left side? So we're just trying to find symmetry and that can take a little bit of a little bit of a while. And then you're gonna bring your legs back up they're parallel pelvis apart. You take your blocks, put them between your knees, let your belly relax, let your shoulders relax against back to knee pillow squeeze. You're gonna squeeze your blocks, relax. Squeeze your blocks, relax. Three, four. You're not trying to crush the blocks. It's just like 50% of your strength. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Take the blocks out, set them aside. 
And the same thing, glute contractions. So you tense your seat, relax. Tense your seat, relax. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Go back, feet together, knees wide. Let your legs get heavy. And you may notice second time around that you feel a little more relaxed, that it, you feel more flexible. And it, physically you may not look any different, but you might feel like things are evening out. And that is, that is perfect. Again, last time, leave your pelvis as it is, bring your legs back up, put those walks between your knees, 20 knee pillow squeezes. So squeeze, relax, squeeze, relax. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Legs are parallel, they're pelvises apart, pelvis is in neutral. Thinking about your glutes, you're gonna tense your bum, relax. Tense your bum, relax. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now again, last time, feet together, knees wide, and observe. Maybe you feel a little flatter, maybe you feel a little more relaxed. Maybe you do not. And I need you to bring your knees together, stretch your legs out and lie flat. So you stretch your legs out and lie flat and just kind of get a sense for how lying flat feels. Are your hamstrings on the floor? Does the arch in your back feel reasonable? How are your neck and shoulders? If you don't feel perfectly comfortable, you're just gonna set yourself up in a way that is. So you might put something under your head. You might put something under your knees. You might Lay on your stomach instead of your back. You might put your legs up on the wall if that feels good. You might sit in meditation as opposed to laying flat on the floor. You might just stop the video and be done if you got things you want to do. Take a moment, place your body in a way that works. As always, you might leave your eyes open, you might close your eyes. Allowing the body to begin to settle. You might choose to watch the breath. Every time you inhale, body expands a little bit. Every time you exhale, body settles. The soles of your feet are relaxed. And your ankles are relaxed. Your lower legs are relaxed and your knees are relaxed. Your thighs are relaxed and your hips are relaxed. Your low back is relaxed and your middle back is relaxed. Your stomach is relaxed and your chest is relaxed. Your fingers are relaxed. The palms of your hands are relaxed. Your 
arms are heavy and relaxed. Your shoulders are relaxed. Your neck is long, your throat is soft. Your jaw is relaxed. Space between your teeth, softness in your tongue. Your lips are relaxed, feeling the corners, the mouth dropping back to the floor beneath you. Your cheeks are relaxed. All the little muscles around your eyes are relaxed, your lids resting softly. Feeling the corners of the eyes dropping back to the floor beneath you. Your forehead is smooth and relaxed. Your ears are relaxed. Your mind is relaxed. your heart is relaxed. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be happy.